Machine gun fire rips through the fuselage. Flames fill the cockpit. The aircraft plummets in a wild spin. But time and again, the pilot of a P-47 Thunderbolt pulls out and keeps on fighting. June 26, 1943. 48 P-47 Thunderbolts of the 56th Fighter Group breach the airspace of occupied France over Le Treport. Their mission? Protect B-17 bombers on their return trip to England. A young fighter pilot named Robert S. Johnson flies Blue 4 at the tail end of the formation. Like many of the 56th, he's new to combat. Robert S. Johnson was among the earliest pilots assigned to the 56th group. He entered combat uh, flying his first missions in the spring of 1943. 15 miles inland, Johnson spots something at five o'clock high. The tiny specks are directly behind him. It's a formation of 16 Focke-Wulf 190s, Germany's most heavily armed single engine fighter. Adrenaline surges. The young pilot calls out the bandits over the radio. The Germans draw closer. Johnson tries the radio again. But before he completes the transmission, the enemy is upon him. just about shot him to pieces. His canopy was perforated. He had an explosive shell explode nearby. It left steel shards in his leg. Metal is ripped. Plexiglass shatters. A machine gun bullet grazes the tip of his nose. Johnson's P-47 plummets from 20,000 feet, spinning out of control. The aircraft shudders and screams. Flames lick exposed skin and swirl inside the cockpit. Most of his instruments were destroyed or damaged. And at that point, Johnson said that he was pretty much resigned to dying. Johnson kicks left rudder to level the wings and pulls back on the stick. Incredibly, the aircraft pulls out of its death spiral, but it may not stay airborne for long. The canopy would only open about six inches and it jammed. He can't get out of the aircraft. Johnson tries to force it open, bracing his feet on the instrument panel. Nothing. He stands, trying to squeeze through the broken canopy frame, but his parachute snags. He began to uh, take stock of the situation. He noticed that the smoke had abated in the cockpit. The fire had gone out from the engine. Through blood-reddened eyes, Johnson scans the skies for any sign of friendly aircraft. He's completely alone. Again, he tries to pound the canopy frame loose. Nothing. The Thunderbolt may prove to be his coffin. He's in a, a glide at that point, slowly losing altitude, but still up there pretty good. And he can't get out of the aircraft. Then, at his 4 o'clock, a single aircraft comes into view. It's a yellow-nosed Fock Wolf 190. His heart sinks. He was intercepted by the German ace, Egon Meyer, who by then had three and a half years of combat and with 66 kills to his credit as of that date, Meyer was a potent, deadly adversary. Egon Meyer closes in for an easy kill. Robert Johnson's only hope for survival rests with his plane. 
the Thunderbolt's reputation for ruggedness will be put to the test as never before. He cannot get out of the way. He cannot outrun it. He is at the mercy of an enemy who almost surely has no mercy in him. In a futile attempt to postpone the inevitable, Johnson banks to the right. The 190 easily keeps pace. Johnson is helpless. The FW-190's nose lights up as Meyer squeezes the trigger. A hail of 7.9 millimeter machine gun bullets pummel the jug. The din is overpowered. Johnson's only defensive maneuver is to alternately hit the rudder pedals to throw off the German's aim. The move causes Meyer to overshoot. For a fleeting moment, Johnson has the upper hand. He fires a burst from his 50 cals. Can't really see him. Canopies covered with oil and hydraulic fluid all over the place. He's got fluid in his eyes. His eyes are burning. But it made him feel good that he could just fire off a couple rounds and show that German pilot that, hey, I can still fight a little bit. Meyer continues a long, slow circle. Johnson can only watch. The 190 effortlessly banks in behind him. But to Johnson's amazement, the 190 pulls up on his wing. Johnson figured that at that point, well, maybe this German is out of ammunition and he's just looking me over. Egon Meyer eyes the battered jug, shakes his head in disbelief then acknowledges the American pilot with a wave. Bob gave a sigh of relief. He said, OK, the Germans letting me go. But Meyer doesn't break off. Johnson realized, oh my god, he's not finished with me yet. The P-47 is punished by another rain of lead. The Thunderbolt shudders under the impact of another burst. Incredulous, Meyer pulls up on Johnson's wing for a second time. The German is determined to finish him off. He just starts raking him over. And the German pilot starts generally hitting his rudder. So he's raking 30 caliber fire from wingtip to wingtip. But the designers at Republic had done their job well. The airplane's sturdy aluminum and steel framework shrugs off yet a third salvo. The Fock Wolf again pulls abreast of the Thunderbolt. The German finally really, no kidding, was out of ammunition. Meyer, a top German ace, has been denied his 67th kill. He rocks his wings in salute and banks away. The sky is once again empty as Johnson nurses the battered P-47 over the English Channel. The Thunderbolt is carrying him home. But when he landed the plane, he started counting the bullet holes. By the time he reached 200, without even moving around the aircraft, he gave up. Robert S. Johnson went on to become America's second highest scoring ace of the European theater, with 27 kills in the P-47 Thunderbolt.